sanity Tax the rich Feed the poor Tell there are no Rich no more seen a lot of what I'll call honest glitches where it just didn't work right, but also that these machines are hackable, that a dishonest They're employee hackable. of the vendor or a dishonest employee of a local board of elections really? or simply someone who knows electronics uh, and has a computer at home um, could hack into these machines and uh, put in a secret instruction to disregard every 20th Democratic vote or add 10% to the carrier to the Bush vote or whatever, and you might not ever know it. Really? Don't block the road to Nevada. So what? After the Rangers plowed through, they arrested several of the protesters who were blocking the main road into the annual counterculture festival known as Burning Man. I apologize, it's burning them. Sorry about that. Tyrus, I will come to you. Fossil fuels is some sort of a control knob on the climate. Well, it just flat out isn't. Sure, humans are influencing the climate to some extent, but natural climate variability is far and away the dominant factor. And they're seizing on extreme weather events as motivating um, elimination of fossil fuels, which is fairly ludicrous because a warming climate um, doesn't necessarily, or there's no evidence that this is leading to worse extreme weather events. We've always had extreme weather. We're currently having extreme weather, and we will have extreme weather in the future, no matter um, what we do regarding fossil fuels. There were more so deaths a hundred years ago from the weather, that that's for sure. That we have to deal with this issue with all these made-up targets, 1.5 degrees centigrade, whatever is um, leading us to make hasty decisions that are bad. For example, wind and solar are very bad solutions um, for our energy supply. And if we would take our time and slowly work towards improving our energy supply, making it more abundant, cleaner, less expensive, you know, by the end of the 21st century, we could be in a really good place. But we can really mess this up if we destroy our energy infrastructure in the short term in thinking that we can actually control the climate. We simply can't. Yeah, I agree. Talk strong firmly on voting for the, the Civil Rights Act before you got it. And I thought, well, maybe there's real progress. But hate never dies. It the, just hides. The and whoppers are works. coming out fast now. I mean, he's reduced to a mumbling, bumbling, bumbling, frankly, buffoon up there. All right, the here we go. Whoa, 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 put on the brakes, put on the brakes. Welcome, welcome, boys and girls, children of all ages. Hoofties, poofties, bung-eyed uppers, right left wing walkers, woodchucks, and chuckettes, kings, and queens to another version of It's News to Us. And you are watching It's News to Us. Here, go play with it. We are, uh, who are we, where are we? You are watching uh, It's News to Us, where Newport's oldest TV news watchers new, new, new brown cows, locals say, uh, and defund the police. I don't think so. It's not working out, uh, and neither is the cadaver in chief. We've been, it, you know, we knew, we knew that he, he was lying and BSing everyone. Stop it. And, uh, and you know, no, oh no, we had to, you know, get in there and got got him in, and the most crooked sob on the planet, and that dumbass crack monkey son of his. Now he's ruined everything. They ruined the economy, inflation, the 
friggin' nuclear, close to nuclear war. And there he is right there. Get off my lawn, damn it. It's, uh, he needs a Thorazine suppository. And uh, we're all inclusive here. We cater to men, women, 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 everybody. Everybody's welcome here. And uh, this is, you know, people, uh, the kids are uh, talking about, oh, global warming and pollution. And that, well, you know what? Here's some real pollution for you. And it's not IBM anymore. It's called Global Foundries. It's the same outfit. But uh, they make uh, they make microchips over here, right over here in Essex Junction. And this is what they get to dump into the Winooski River every day. Because you know what? The uh, EPA, their motto is, the solution to pollution is dilution. And uh, speaking of IBM, there's IBM's Head Watson uh, getting the Volks medal from Defua in 1937. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I do, why don't you talk about some real pollution instead of carbon dioxide. It's just CO2, okay? Plants exude it. Well, no, we exude it. Plants take it, take it in, and uh, and we uh, give us oxygen. Okay, where's that thing about the bread? I I have to do this article first. Um, I saw you brought breakfast in or something. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I just have to do this because. They had this article about bread, you know, and, and this bakery. Oh, yeah, this wonderful. Here it is. Klinger's bread celebrates long shelf life. And I'm thinking, long shelf life? Well, ain't that the truth, okay? Because uh, Klinger's bread, yeah, you know, long shelf life. Because, see, <clears throat> what happens is uh, some bread, unless it's organic, now, I'm not a doctor or anything. I'm not making any claims about food or anything like that for the YouTube people. But uh, it's uh, if you don't refrigerate bread, uh, it, 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 it'll get moldy, uh, especially organic bread. It gets moldy right away. Well, bread used to get moldy. Let me put it that way. So what I did was every now and then, when, they, when I can't find organic bread, I find, you know, I get regular bread, and what I don't use, I stick in the freezer, either for turkey stuffing or something, you know, whatever. So I got this bread, and I stuffed it in the freezer. Well, I needed some room in the freezer the other day, uh, the, the other month, okay? We're talking two or three months now, okay? So this is, I won't say who it's made by, it's a store brand, rye bread. Smells okay still. This is months. It's been sitting out for months. Look at this Todster. Camera two. Look at that. No <laughs> mold, nothing. Damn. At room temperature, dude. So so this was in your freezer and then taken out of your freezer. Yeah. And <laughs> it's and just left out. <laughs> Now I found it. Uh, my I, I refrigerate my organic bread yeah. uh, that that I eat when I eat do eat bread, and uh, so that doesn't have a chance to get moldy because I'll you know I'll go through a, a loaf of bread maybe in a week or two, but so that that's one. That's the rye bread there, okay, and uh, and I needed I needed a little bit of rum in the freezer so I, I took out a, another one and let's see what this one is uh, yeah, let's see. bear with me folks we do a lot of preparation for this show as you can see <laughs> a lot of show prep we take a lot you know there's a lot of a lot of preparation and producing that goes into producing a show like this and uh, here's another one. Uh, it's rye also. And it's a little lumpy from being frozen, but again, look at that. Not a speck of friggin' mold. Hmm. Mm. Now let's see. Wow. I wonder if they mentioned uh, uh, in the ingredients like, what the preservatives are. Okay, flour, barley flour, water, rye flour, salt, 
caraway seed, sugar, acetic acid, lactic acid, dill seed, natural flavor, yeast, wheat gluten, calcium sulfate, enzymes, ascorbic acid, that's vitamin C, soybean oil, vinegar, monoglycerides, propionic acid, and phosphoric acid. Okay, I'm thinking that this, uh, yeah, calcium pro, pro, calcium propionate to retain freshness. And uh, it looks like it sure retained its freshness all right. Huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'll bet you, I'll bet you if you uh, ate this stuff day in and day out and went and got yourself a good colonoscopy, it might still be lumped up in there, you know, uh, like kind of like wallpaper paste. So anyways, let's see. Uh, oh, this one kills me too. Uh, below the flow, fold. Global inflation's pressure could grow. Now, where, did it, where, where do all these bankers and everybody from the world, uh, the, the world bankers go meet? Uh, thanks. Uh, right there on the edge. Uh, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, of course, which is up near uh, Yellowstone National Park in that <coughs> corner of Wyoming. Oh, be quiet. And sure enough, man, it's, uh, did you know that the average worker, the person who works at the resorts in Jackson Hole, Toddster, has, uh, has to drive like something like 40, 50 miles to go to work because they can't afford to live near anywhere near where they work. <laughs> like sounds like New York City. Yeah, exactly. Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, and this is by Christopher Ruggaber. It's a name we see from uh, over and over again, uh, and uh, and uh, Associated Press reporter, which, which really means he's a you know he's a mouthpiece for the uh, he's a Democratic apologist for the party. Uh, let's see. Rising trade barriers, aging populations, a broad transition from carbon spewing fossil fuels to renewable energy. The prevalence of such trends could intensify global inflation pressures in the coming years and make it harder for the Federal Reserve and other banks to meet their inflation targets. Well, their inflation targets, they're printing up money like it was like their sideshow Bob. Uh, it, it, your money is devaluing daily. Your wages are not keeping up with it now, it, it, and they're guaranteed to cause a recession because when you start jumping up interest rates, younger people can uh, can't afford their first house, and that means uh, nobody's uh, people don't buy construction materials. They don't need roofers. They don't need friggin' plumbers and electricians. And boom, you know, next thing you know, we've got stagflation and the country's going down to hell in a handbasket. And and for what? For what? You know, have we seen any improvements in rail? You know, passenger rail, which is something that worked great 100 years ago? No. Oh, no, we're going to have EV charging stations and movies. people are going to be buying EVs. Well, you know what? The EVs, uh, do, people say they suck. You have to try and plan your trip. I'll be, bet you ask anyone who owns an EV if their family solely owns a, an EV or if they have a gasoline or diesel rig on the side for an emergency or for a long trip, you know, because the EVs are just for show. But, oh, no, man. And, and, and plus the billions to the, the Ukraine, it's crazy. That concern was a theme sounded in several high-profile speeches and studies presented Friday at the Fed's anal conference of central bankers in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And you want to talk about lies, man. They talk about Trump and his lies. Well, here's some lies about uh, lies about friggin' uh, monetary things. Let's see. For decades... The global economy had been moving towards greater integration, with goods flowing more freely between the U.S. and its trading partners. Lower wage production overseas allowed Americans to enjoy inexpensive goods and keep kept inflation low, though at the expense of many U.S. manufacturing jobs. Well, yeah, who's going to be able to buy squat no matter how cheap it is if you don't have a job, okay? 
When I was a kid, it cost you a, a friggin' week's wages for a good pair of shoes. But damn it, the person making the pair of shoes had a had a friggin' decent was making a decent wage and had benefits, and it's crazy. Oh yeah, they've allowed Americans to enjoy inexpensive goods. No, what kept inflation low was increased production. And how do you increase production? You we you, uh, we found energy right under our feet, man. Uh, they found a way to extract oil that they had thought was just uh, stuck in the ground forever through fracking. Same thing with uh, natural gas. Uh, and when you have cheap energy, man, you can you can get, uh, you know, it, it, boom, the economy gets ripping. And, you know, and we could take a percentage of that and, and put it away in funds and, and, and head towards uh, and head towards friggin energy independence. We could do that. Of course we could do that. We were headed that way anyways. There are plenty of subsidies, but you know what? We don't have the storage capacity. The windmills, especially the offshore ones, they're killing whales like crazy. And where's the environmental people? Oh, we've, we're losing right whales. Hey, populations down to about 90 left on the whole planet. They're rolling up dead on the New Jersey beaches. And, you know, nobody... What? Man, oh, man. Since the pandemic, though... Oh, the pandemic. Yeah, that scamdemic. Get down, baby. No, no, no. Get down. Go play. Uh, since the pandemic, though, the trend has shown signs of reversing. Multinational corporations have been shifting their supply chains away from China. Yeah, and then you read further, further down, and uh, and it says that it says that uh, China boosted its investment. That yeah, they're moving the jobs away from China. And then you read further down, it says China has boosted its investment in factories in Vietnam and Mexico. Uh, moreover, other countries that ship goods to the U.S. also import parts from China. Uh, these developments suggest that the U.S. hasn't necessarily reduced its economic ties with China. So everything we told you in the last three paragraphs is wrong. But we're hoping that you will, you'll overlook that, okay? Because, you know, it's, it's an article about economics, and most people won't delve into economics, and, you know, it... Uh, we don't have a chance to blame Trump because he's not in power. You know what I mean? It's crazy. The new environment sets the stage for uh, a larger relative price shocks than we saw before the pandemic, said Christine Lagarde, that hag. If we face higher investment needs and greater supply restraints, we're likely to see stronger price pressures in markets like commodities, especially for the metals and minerals that are crucial for green technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you know, don't mind, don't mind that poor black kid that's over in the Congo getting cave, uh, dying in mine cave-ins, uh, digging up minerals for these stupid batteries. Uh, but you know, don't mind them. You know, we we don't we don't want to allow them to dig up the minerals, that lithium and stuff that we need here in the U.S. You, you might ruin the the Nevada buckthorn. You know. We can't grant you a permit for that. We would rather, you know, we'd rather kill the kids in Africa. That's crazy, man. Let's see. Who are some more lies? Uh, let's see. Five percent green. Oh, yeah, right. China's in big trouble too, by the way. Despite all the changes, U.S. imports reached an all-time high, suggesting overall trade has remained high. No, it means we're getting screwed. We're importing b twice as much as we export. All we're exporting is worthless dollars, and that's going to end real soon, thanks to the meeting that they just had in South Africa, where they're going to come up with a global reserve uh, currency to ditch the U.S. dollar. It's, this is getting crazy. Yeah, sure. At the same time, global, some global trends could work in the other direction and cool inflation in the coming years. One such factor is weakening growth in China, the world's second largest economy after the U.S. With its economy struggling, this is the last paragraph, mind you. You always have to read it from back to front because that's where the truth is in the last paragraph. 
With its economy struggling, China will buy less oil, minerals, and other commodities, a trend that should put downward pressure on the global costs of those goods. Yeah, yeah, right. We're still, you know, we're still burning the same amount of oil. We just, we whizzed, Joe's opened up the uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, emptied that out, and so we're still buying high-priced oil from the friggin' Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. And you, 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 what? It's, it's nuts, man. It's nuts. But you know what? Our survey says you're ignorant. <clears throat> Poll, Biden is old and Trump is corrupt. Well, you know what? It's old and Trump is not corrupt. They had all these... Remember uh, Robert Mueller <coughs> and the FBI making up stuff about Trump? Yeah, oh, yeah. We have to make up stuff about Trump because he's clean as a whistle for crying out loud. You're going to get him for what? A non-disclosure agreement with a stripper? Oh, wow, that's real heavy. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, I got uh, from the news division here at NEKTV, they were nice enough to uh, print me. Aren't you being a good girl for a change? They're nice enough to print me up this. Uh, this is from The Guardian, okay? China continues coal spree despite climate goals. And The Guardian, for anyone who knows, The Guardian is a socialist newspaper and has been a socialist news outlet since, oh, I don't know, since the days of the Wobblies, you know, the workers of the world unite in uh, 1898. <clears throat> So it gets uh, so <clears throat> this one's good. Uh, it's by Helen Davidson in Taipei from the 29th of mm. August. Will you get down? Uh, you were just being good. Huh? Thank you. China is approving new coal power projects at the equivalent of two plants every week. Uh, a rate energy watchdog say is unsustainable if the country hopes to achieve its energy targets. Well, they don't care. They're communists. It's like you know what we're gonna do. We're telling John Kerry and Joe Biteney. Uh, well, we paid off Joe Biteney and Kerry's son and those guys. We you know they're bought and paid for. <clears throat> so we're lying to them. We're lying to the world. We ain't gonna have any of these targets. It's like yeah, sure. We we'll have, we're, we'll meet the targets by 2050. Says China. Let's see, the government pledged to peak emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2060. And in 2021, the president, Xi Jinping, promised to stop building coal plants, power, uh, powered coal-powered plants abroad. But after regional power crunches in 20, stop it, in 2022, China started a domestic spree of approving new projects and restarted suspended ones. Well, that was just, that was what, last year? Huh. And John Kerry's over there with his knee pads on, begging to, uh, begging to get him to go back on track. They ain't going to do it. Uh, let's see. In tw uh, last year, the government a hundred rec approved a record-breaking 106 gigawatts of new coal-fired uh, capacity. One gigawatt is the equivalent of a large coal power plant. Remember the Back to the Future, Todd? Yeah, that was uh, gigawatts, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, 20, 21 gigawatts! <laughs> you don't even get that out of a bolt of lightning! <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. The run of approvals is continuing on track to break last year's record, according to analysis by the Global Energy Monitor and the Center for Research Energy and Clean Air. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. At least the Chinese, when they're building these new power plants, Toddster, they've adopted. Remember when Trump came out and said, we're going to use clean coal in the future? Yeah. And everybody laughed at him? Mm -hmm. Well, and even I did at the time because there's no such thing as clean coal. Well, no. We've been working with the, with the Germans, of all people. Come here, get down. Uh, we've been working with the Germans since, like, 2002 to uh, develop... Uh, smokestack scrubbers and uh, electrostatic precipitators, and we've gotten coal burning down to uh, 
down to a science where there's hardly anything coming off the stack except for CO2 and water vapor, right? So that, that's the good news, bad news is. The bad news is, there's uh, spiky. The bad news is uh, that China's built in more coal, uh, coal plants. The good news is they're, uh, they're using clean coal. You know, they're using uh, the new, the new um, stuff. Let's see. Oh, is it, it, these, these monitors said that uh, in the first half of this year, authorities granted approvals for 52 gigawatts, began construction on 37 gigawatts, announced, announced 41 gigawatts worth of new projects, revived 8 gigawatts of previously shelved projects. It said about half the plants get permitted last year and started construction by summer. Let's see. Unless permitting is stopped immediately, China won't be able to reduce coal-fired power capacity during the 15, uh, the 15th five-year plan. <laughs> it's like, it's the old joke about the Soviet Union, you know. It's like, I really admire your five-year plan, you know. What's it been, like 30 years so far? <laughs> Oh, come on, it's like Stalin, man. And it's the 15th five-year plan without subsequent cancellations of already permitted projects. China is the world's largest producer of renewable energy, including wind, solar, and hydro. But uh, previous analysis have found in, uh, infrastructure to store and distribute the energy has not kept pace. Like we said, they can't keep pace because it just can't keep pace, you know? It's just not gonna. It's not gonna do it. That's your buddy Kelby. Now don't even think about it, because Kelby will beat you. <laughs> uh, Sixty percent of new coal plants are in grid regions where there's already an excess of coal-fired capacity. Uh, yada yada. And it goes on and on. See, there's more development than there is need for development. When we look at it from energy security, uh, they're putting an extremely high premium on short-term energy security. I don't mean systemic issues, uh, even making sure there's not a two-hour power shortage. That's taken over everything else, including the financials, but certainly uh, decarbonization. Well, you know what? You know what Xi Jinping says? I got your G decarbonization swinging, Bucky. China's not going to do anything. We're going to tell you. We're going to tell you. Every, promise you everything and give you nothing, man. We got nothing, and we didn't give you anything in writing. We're not going to. No, screw you, people. But I'll tell you what. You can have our word, okay? Open up that fortune cookie. See what it says. Maybe, maybe not, okay? Oh, Z's credibility is largely tied to the 2030 goal. But some of the year-to-year -year thing, I don't take much stock in. Yeah, really. So anyways, this is The Guardian. Go on The Guardian and read the article. It's great. Oh, here's another one, too. A few years ago, when Ray and I were doing this show, first me and Charlie started doing this show in 2009. Charlie's wife killed him on the first episode. And Ray came in, and we did the show for a while, and then I did it with Captain Salty. But anyways... In 2011, we made fun of this EB-5 program because everybody was touting this thing, oh, the EB-5 program, it's going to bring jobs to the Northeast Kingdom. It's insane. We, <laughs> we were, thank you, the little kid. It's going to be great. There's going to be jobs, 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 and, you know, and we're going to tear down a whole block downtown and we're, we're going to leave nothing but a smoking hole and then we're going to put up a big big hotel with a spaceport on the top of the aliens can land their spaceships and we're going to have the lee brothers robert e lee <laughs> oh, they, they, all the leaves they're coming in from korea it, it's great we're going to eb5 it's going to be so good well guess what EB-5 started circling the bull in what, 2016, Todd? Um, yeah, it was about that, probably. Yeah, yeah. It circled the bull, and down it went. Well, they decided to, settlement, uh, to settle with uh, 
See, because there was a lot of sticky fingers in this, and I'm talking people from the state. And for some reason, I mean, they found uh, emails that the lawyers requested on the lawsuit. They found emails on a hard drive in somebody's closet in Montpelier at the, down at the state capitol. I mean, this whole thing is friggin' dirty from the day, the first day. And anyways, so now they're going to settle. Now, your average investor had to put in, oh, I don't know, 500000 And in return, they would get green cards or visas uh, to come to the United States so they could get citizenship. You give us money, we give you citizenship. See? No. Now we just open up a border and let in everybody. It don't matter. You know, no health checks, no vaccines, no nothing. We just open a border. But back then, you had to give them half a million dollars. So David Groff, an attorney for the state, shakes hands with Russell Barr after settlement uh, in Lamoille County on June 22nd. Goldberg, the receiver, hoy, another Irishman, has filed a court document outlining how the money could be distributed among the foreign investors who lost money and the attorneys who represented them. Uh, if approved, the former would take home millions and the latter any, it would get from 1000 to 75000 so that means, like you, to, in case you don't know former from latter, it means the lawyers get millions and the investors get pennies. Back to the EB-5 program. So the investors are going to get pennies on a dollar. Newport gets a smoking block downtown, which Terry says is, you know, it's worth it because the place was kind of like a rabbit warren uh, den of stop it, den of, uh, of uh, junk uh, tenements back down there. Each EB-5 investor put at least 500 grand into one of eight NEK projects with the expectation if their investment met the job creating requirements, they'd be eligible for permanent residency or green cards. However, because of the fraud, many investors have struggled to obtain the green cards. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I quit smoking around Memorial Day. Damn it. You'd never know it, though. Hey. Details of how the settlement money would be divvied up were not revealed when the agreement was announced. Let's see. According to Goldboig, Barr's attorneys in his law firm, the Barr Group, would receive $5.5 million of the $16.5 million. So the investors need not pay such amounts. Byron and his legal team had taken the state to trial. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, it's all coming. There's going to be jobs. And we made a joke. I went on. I went online, and I looked up this ANSI bio thing. Way back then. That's all I did. I just went online, and I punched it. looked went to the financial website, and I looked it up. And I looked up ANSI Bio, and there it was. ANSI Bio was a place that had nothing. They had some patents pending, some medical patents pending. And they were on the something like the fifth floor, a corner office of a sports betting firm on the fifth floor of a building in Seoul, South Korea. And uh, somehow, I was the only one that could find it. None of the reporters for the print media could find it. And yet, you know, when I uh, got booted from the friggin' governor's press, COVID press conferences, they had the gall to call me Hobby News. Yeah, he's just Hobby News. He wears funny hats. Yeah, that's because I'm the oracle of the deplorables. Oh, yeah, U.S. Department of Labor. This is news you won't see in the news. The Department of Labor says Elon Musk needs more foreign labor. Did you know that, Todd? I, I did not. Yeah, yeah. A guy comes to the United States. He's 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 an African American. <laughs> yeah, starts a couple of companies, man. Uh, what was his first one? PayPal, I think, was his big claim to fame in the beginning. Yeah, it had a different name, but it became PayPal. Yeah, and uh, and now the Department of Labor says he needs more foreign labor. Great, sure. Now you, you, you can bet your bottom your bottom dollar. That if Trump was uh, president, that this would not be happening. Okay, this would not be happening. 
Oh, so Elon didn't say he needed it. They no. told him he needed it. No, the Department of Labor. Oh, okay. Yeah. The ones are Gina Raimundo, who the former, uh, she's the former governor of Rhode Island. She runs that outfit now, and she's the one over in China. They're going to bail out the friggin' Chinese because the Chinese are in trouble. Their economy is circling the friggin' bowl tie. Hmm. Get your nose off the microphone, freak. Oh, and in Yarmouth, Mass. Oh, yeah. Last week too, they had the debates. Uh, the, the Republican debates. Yeah, right. It was the Keebler elves, except for Vivek Ramaswamy. He's the only one that has half a brain. The rest of them up there were a bunch of cronies and hacks. Chris Christie, uh, you know, Nikki Haley. They're a bunch of warmongers. Mike Pence. Come on, the man from Glad. What the hell? And uh, stop it. Get the hell down. Get down. And so... Uh, Do you want to turn your microphone back towards yourself a little bit? Yeah, so it was just... Uh, oh, that's better. The debates The debates were just nuts. So anyways, at the same time, uh, Tucker Carlson ran an interview we did with Trump. And there was 13 million viewers um, versus 24 million uh, in 2015, uh, when Fox last did the de Republican debates, so uh, but this year it was 13 million, uh, and, t and Tucker got between 148 and 200 million views on his uh, on his Twitter interview. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nobody wants the hacks, okay? The old Republican days of the old Republican Party are over. They're dead and buried, okay? That's it. It's, they're over. Uh, we want somebody who's going to stand up for us. Get down. Leave my hat alone. And, uh, and, and get rid of the free trade. And, and cl close up our borders. We're going to have between another 8 million welfare recipients here. Will you shut up? And, they, you know, they, get this. They just booted a bunch of people out of Sounds out like of your dog's hotel. a Democrat and doesn't enjoy what you're saying. Say what? It sounds like your dog's a Democrat and disagrees with you. Yeah. <laughs> Behave. Well, anyways, right down here on Cape Cod in, in Yarmouth, uh, Mass., in Yarmouth, they had a... They had these people staying at a motel. They were seniors and vets and stuff like that, Todd. Yeah. And they were charging them 300 bucks a week. <clears throat> and suddenly uh, the state came in and gave them the boot. Well, they, they didn't give them the boot right away. They, they raised the rate from 300 a week to $700 a week, which effectively booted them out. And uh, so they're bringing in illegals where the state's going to pay the 700 a week, which is, you know, our taxpayers, you, me, everybody else. And they did the same thing with the uh, with that, I don't know, some motel hotel there, UMass Lowell. They're like dormitories. It's crazy, man. And uh, let's see. Oh, now we've got IRS agents, not ATF, mind you. We've got IRS agents. Stop it, you little pain in the butt. We've got IRS agents um, raiding, raiding gun stores for rules violations, not laws, mind you. These are not laws that are promulgated by Congress or anybody else. These are rules made up by bureaucrats by government bureaucrats who've got their job, these people who were the epitome of the deep state, the ones who can't be union, they can't be fired, you can't get rid of them, they're there forever, you, you just, you know, and so they're going around raiding people and it's just making a hassle with gun dealers. Are your papers in order? So anyways, there's a, a guy who's trying to stop it, Rat, Representative Matt Rosendale. Uh, you can see him at mattformontana.com. Yeah, and they've been killing people, too, the FBI. The, uh, last, last week we told you about they executed uh, that senior, that 300-pound senior citizen who could barely walk in Utah. 
they did a pre-dawn raid and executed the friggin' guy in his own home because uh, he posted some stupid anti-Biden rants on Facebook threatening to kill him. I mean, people threatened to kill Trump left and right for four years. They didn't do squat about that. I mean, even Madonna, Johnny Depp, remember? Everybody threatened to kill Trump. But so the they execution team got the Utah senior. And then on August 17th, they got a 25-year-old uh, Vietnam vet. They, they killed him in Tennessee in a pre-dawn raid. I don't have his name, damn it. Oh, and now we find out that uh, Joe Biden, when he was vice president, to help cover up his illegal schemes with that crack addict son of his, had uh, 5,400 emails. They put in a request for these emails a year ago, and they're just getting them now. And these are, you know, you wouldn't think that, well, they're just emails, right? No problem. Well, the only trouble is they're emails made under uh, pseudonyms. Uh, and made up names, made up names like uh, Robin Beware and uh, Robert L. Peters, you know, uh, yeah, that's okay, right? And uh, and we're finding out too that he's uh, him and Hunter, uh, according to uh, not Lauren Boebert, but this other woman, Congresswoman, she's had a chance to look at the suspicious activity reports. And she, although she can't say, uh, you know, it, what the what the amount is, she said that that the her, him and Hunter have taken over fifty million dollars in bribes. Okay, uh, I think that's just from the Chinese too. Unbelievable. Oh, and in uh, over in South Burlington, we have another new American, Todd. You know, Governor Scott keeps talking about the uh, about the uh, countless contributions of our new American friends, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of our new Americans named Abdir Firesman, he violated his conditions of release. He tried to shoot at the cops. He smashed a store window. He tried to ram the cops. That's okay. And uh, because he was out on bail, you know, we didn't want to, uh, you know, Greasy Sarah didn't want to, you know, appear racist by keeping him in jail for his previous violent friggin' criminal uh, stuff. It's nuts, man. And they got a 33%. You usually, uh, most jails and prisons in this country have an 8% backlog. But in Fulton County, Georgia, where this fat Fanny Willis is after Donald Trump, which is insane because this has never happened before, for a First Amendment violation, <clears throat> so you can't question an election anymore. That's why, thanks to Todd, we put on a couple of uh, clips this week. But anyways, there's usually a 33% uh, backlog to get into court. But in Fulton County, it's a 33% backlog. There's been three dead people in that jail in the past three months. Even And Fat Fanny has the judges complaining uh, about this stuff. And she's been had this guy, a black election worker named Harrison Floyd. Never mind George Floyd. This is Harrison Floyd. She's uh, He's been still in jail. She claims he's a flight risk, even though he like lives in Atlanta. It's unbelievable. Oh, and uh, now we're finding out, too, that the, that the Army, the military brass, were screaming bloody murder. The, the, the military guys were screaming bloody murder at Abbey Gate in uh, Kabul in Afghanistan when the Taliban were coming. They had their eyes on a, a bomber. They knew the guy was a bomber. They could see the vest. He had all his stuff on. And they, the, the Marine asked for permission, the sniper asked for permission to take the guy out before he blew up the crowd. No, they wouldn't give him permission. So what did he do? He blows up a crowd of people, killed something like, I don't know, 70, 80 Afghans and 13 U.S. servicemen. We're just finding that out, too. But that's okay. 
you know, yeah. Here we are. And this this kills me too. GOP support for gun restriction slips. And yeah, with Joe bite me right there. And uh <laughs> yeah, well, that's because nobody's enforcing the laws they have on the books now. Look at Hunter Biden. They were going to give Hunter Biden uh, immunity from prosecution for any crime, any crimes he'd commit in the future. Get down. Just get down and shut up. Go chew on that crayon. Yeah, sure. We tried to legislate things for years without a lot of success. I don't think law and regulation are the answer to our problems. I've lost faith in both sides. It goes problem goes beyond guns. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah. Former Governor Christie said he'd send violent criminals to prison. Well, you know, that's what they used to do, but not anymore because you don't want to be racist. You stop it and get down. Now, let's see. Where was that other one I wanted to dig up here? Oh, the theft. Yeah. There, now now we're having this epidemic of shoplifting is, is hitting Williston, Todd, all those big box stores in Williston. No. In Williston and uh, Burlington and South Burlington. And they're not doing anything about it. Hmm. There are no simple answers for how to curb retail theft, and Foley believes it starts with addressing the underlying problems Vermonters are facing, including shut up, including addiction, mental health issues, and homelessness. Oh yeah, right. Well, we'll give them we'll take care of the homelessness. You steal, we'll give you a nice padded cell. How's that? Will you shut up? <laughs> How's a nice padded cell gonna be? You wanna we'll give you something. Now knock it off. What is different, according to Wilson and police chief Fed Foley, shoplifters have become more brazen, more violent, and are exploiting a lack of consequences. Oh you think? Oh you think? Once apprehended, the shoplifters don't go to jail for nonviolent misdemeanor offenses. Whose fault is that? Greasy Sarah. Sarah George, our greasy prosecutor. They joke about it. Uh, and they often quote back to his officers the site and release, suggesting they know they'll be released soon. There's no repercussions, no accountability. There are four prominent motives for shoplifting. The top motive is related to drug addiction, uh, homelessness, mental health, and alcoholism. Oh, yeah. You know, we didn't have any of those problems before. Stella, don't you make a mess with that. <laughs> Nutcase. Nutcase. Bread, bread toy. You can't. Yeah. You got about five-ish minutes. Man, I wish bread excited me that much. Jeez. <laughs> what are you? What kind of nutcase dog are you? Look, I know you lost your best buddy over the weekend. All right, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to return to being a normal friggin' dog. All right. I should have had the other camera on, but I don't. People can't see this. Uh... I don't think you could follow her. She's just nuts. Well, wait till the new cameras come in. We're going to have joysticks, and we'll be able to zoom all around the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Let's see. Burling has had 377 retail thefts. Uh, let's see. And and the numbers are going up. South Burlington's at 174, 102 this just this year. And that's going up. Retail theft becomes a felony once more than 900 bucks worth of stolen at one time. Over the past decade, South Burlington is averaging four felony retail thefts a year. However, last year the number jumped to 40. It went from four to 40, Todd. 
once they found out that it was okay. Man. Yeah, geez, I can't understand why. You know, there's just no consequences, but, you know. And here we are, week in, week out. Burlington's art district impresses with its murals. Yeah, murals. What about the graffiti? Half of Burlington is murals. The other half is graffiti. Above the fold, uh, we've got murals. Below the fold, bash Trump. That's it. Week in, week out, you got to bash Trump. Bash the Trump. Trump to surrender in a Georgia jail. You know, if they if this is allowed to stand, our government is it's over with. It's over. Because if this is allowed to stand and you're not allowed to question elections ever anymore again, or you're not or if you're not allowed to question anything, you, you won't be allowed to question vaccines, uh, you or Dr. Fauci, you won't be allowed to question anything. If this is allowed to stand, we're screwed, okay? And, and the party in power will just be one party going after the other party and you back and forth. It's going to be insane. It, this isn't the way it works. This, I hope the Supreme Court's got to put the bite on this and like right away. Yeah, here we are right here. Georgia jail where Trump will be booked is problematic. Oh, you think? It's long been plagued with violence. She can't take care of the kid, like we said, the cases she has there now, local cases. The place is overcrowded and, and the, the backlog, and yet she's after, she's like Moby Dick, after the great white wheel. And why is it all these people are black that are after Trump? You know, the, the guy used to get awards from BET and Jesse Jackson and everybody else until he stayed, ran for president. Let's see. Fulton Jail, which opened in 89, uh, had more than 3,200 people earlier this year, well above the capacity of 2,700. Stabbings are frequent. Medical care is poor. Three people have died over the last month after being found unresponsive, two of them in the medical unit. The U.S. Department of Justice announced earlier this year that it opened a civil rights investigation into conditions at the Fulton Jail with officials citing violence, filthy conditions, and the death of last year of LaShawn Thompson, whose body was found covered with insects. The bed bugs were eating him alive, Todd. Mm. Yuck. Yeah. That's gross. You think? And this woman is using the funny what their what their the Georgia uh uh Senators, state senators and, and congressmen, they're trying to get together right now and either give her the boot and cut her funding. And the same thing in Washington, too. They're trying to cut the funding for these people. It's the only way it's going to stop. It's the only way it's going to stop them because uh, an appeal to the Supreme Court would, would last until after the damn election. And trust me, if the people in Boston could elect, um, what was it, George Michael Curley or whatever his name was, from jail, okay, they liked the mayor so much they, they elected him from jail. If they could do that 100 years ago, then you know what? Uh, the more that people are put, uh, beating on Trump for absolutely nothing, the, the more that he'll be, chances are he'll be elected, even if they did jail him or make him a felon, you know? This is insane, man. It would probably help his numbers. Oh, yeah. It's his numbers with black men have gone through the roof. Have you seen that? No. Oh, dude. Look on, uh, just die if you get a minute, which you never do. Uh, look up social media and then just say, you know, but the black men supporting Trump. It's insane. Huh. It's like he'd be one of us now, man. <laughs> the man's after him. You got about two minutes just to let you know. Okay, what happened in the old days? Oh, yeah. Let's see. In 1814, the British uh, burned Washington, D.C., which was one of the best things to happen to it. Uh, let's see. Oh, in 1954, President Eisenhower signed the Communist Control Act, outlawing the Communist Party in the United States. Well, I'm pretty sure the, the uh, what is it, the uh, ACLU... Um, uh, took him to court 
and said, you can't outlaw a party, you know, a political party, just because you don't like it. This is the U.S. friggin' A of A, you know. Uh, no matter what, no. And I'm pretty sure it got overturned by the Supreme Court. There's Mackey right there. You have to say goodbye to Mac on Monday. And what else? Uh, let's see. 2014, Michael Brown was shot. 17-18, the Cajuns went to New Orleans. Oh, Teddy Kennedy, uh, as of uh, last Friday, Ted Kennedy's been sober since 2009, Todd. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, he had to die to do it. Oh. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that worked. Yeah. Oh, in 68, the Democratic National Committee, yeah, they nominated Hubert Horatio Humphrey, and, uh, and there was a riot in Chicago. Boy, do I remember 1968. That was a wild time, boy. Oh, in 1963, it was the Martin Luther King. It was not an I have a dream speech, okay? The speech was not I have a dream. Get that. Get down. It's not a toy. The dream was a. The speech was called the bad check speech, okay? Because Martin Luther King said that the the black people had been given a bad check, and they were here a hundred years later in Washington to redeem it because it had been come back to them marked insufficient funds. And then suddenly Mahalia Jackson out of nowhere comes up to him and says, "Tell him about that dream, Martin. Tell him about your dream." And he goes on, and he, they missed the whole point of the speech. Mm. But I remember it. You know why? Because I watched it. And I had to tell that black woman that at Governor Scott's press conferences. I said, look, I saw the man, all right? I saw him give that speech, because that's what they used to do on TV in the old days. They had real news divisions and stuff. All right, we out of time? You are. Uh, once again, we wasted a perfectly good hour here on watching a stupid show. We'll just stop it. <laughs> and hopefully, we'll see you again next week, inshallah. Good Lord willing, the Christmas. Stop it. Until then, get down on your hands and knees and not only lost. Snip the bum of the guy in the man dress in front of you. Head east and worship the meteorite in Mecca and go, Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Akbar! Boom! Oh, boom. There's the boom. Uh, number one, we've seen a lot of what I'll call honest glitches where it just didn't work right. But also that these machines are hackable. That a dishonest They're employee hackable. of the vendor or a dishonest employee of a local board of elections really? or simply someone who knows electronics uh, and has a computer at home um, could hack into these machines and uh, put in a secret instruction to disregard every 20th Democratic vote or it. 10% to the carrier, to the bush or whatever, and you might not ever know it. Really? Walk the road to Nevada. So what? After the Rangers plowed through, they arrested several of the protesters who were blocking the main road into the annual counterculture festival known as Burning Man. I apologize, it's burning them. Sorry about that. Tyrus, I will come to you. Fossil fuels is some sort of a control knob on the climate. Well, it just flat out isn't. Sure, humans are influencing the climate to some extent, but natural climate variability is far and away the dominant factor. And they're seizing on extreme weather events as motivating um, elimination of fossil fuels, which is fairly ludicrous because a warming climate um, doesn't necessarily, or there's no evidence that this is leading to worse extreme weather events. We've always had extreme weather. We're currently having extreme weather, and we will have extreme weather in the future, no matter um, what we do regarding fossil fuels. 
And there were more so deaths a hundred years ago from the weather, the, that's for the sure. That we have to deal with this issue with all these made up targets, 1.5 degrees centigrade, whatever, is um, leading us to make hasty decisions that are bad. For example, wind and solar are very bad solutions um, for our energy supply. And if we would take our time and slowly work, towards improving our energy supply, making it more abundant, cleaner, less expensive, you know, by the end of the 21st century, we could be in a really good place. But we can really mess this up if we destroy our energy infrastructure in the short term in thinking that we can actually control the climate. We simply can't. Talk strong and voting for the, the Civil Rights Act before you got it. And I thought, well, maybe there's real progress. But hate never dies. Well, it just hides. Uh, the and whoppers are the coming rocks. out fast now. I mean, he's reduced to a mumbling, bumbling, bumbling, frankly.